Good morning guys, I hope you're all well. I hope you can hear me above the uh, crashing of the waves on the beach there. But This is a little bit of an unusual video um, for me because most of the time our videos are anything up to a month um, behind where we actually are in our travels. Only because we're videoing quite a lot, we're travelling a lot and by the time I get round to doing all the editing and so forth, you know, that time's elapsed. But um, because of the current climate and current situation, I thought I'd put out a video which is more up to date. Just so you, the guys that are viewing, our friends and our family can know where we are and that we're all safe and good. So we're here in southern Portugal. We're on a little remote beach park up and uh, we're just trying to isolate ourselves really from community and stay safe. And I couldn't think of a better place to be than here on the south coast of Portugal. Some of the best times we've had so far on this trip have been here in Portugal. The people are so lovely and friendly. And I think if you look in the distance behind us, this little peninsula right on the horizon that you see jutting out there, that is Sagres and the fortress at Sagres. Yeah, we're on a little remote beach park up not far from Sagres. I'm not going to put locations in the description of where we are because, you know, with the current climate, everybody needs to keep a little bit of distance between ourselves. But there's a handful of our British friends here. Um, we've been travelling with Paul and Sue Brown for the last couple of weeks. So those guys are still with us. We've uh, bumped into Martin from Houseless Not Homeless. And uh, I'll give you, we've had a chat with him obviously and I'll, I'll put that in the video here as well. He's popped down to meet up with us. And we're also here with our friends, we're away, Debbie and Martin, they're also here. They were here already and we sort of knew that they were here at this location so we've come down to stay with them. So there's just a handful of Brits here. It's nice to have a bit of company in these situations. And uh, yeah, let me just show you around the place and show you where we're, where we're camped up. But before I just whiz into that, just want to let all our family and friends and all you guys back home know that we're safe and sound, no problems at all. Everything is fine, we've got plenty of food and water and that. And uh, yeah, we're, we're absolutely fine, no problems whatsoever. I just want to briefly mention the two shows that we're due to be attending very soon. The International Camper Van Show at Stratford-upon-Avon and Camp Quirky. Both of those events, obviously because of the current situation, they've been cancelled or postponed. So the International Camper Van Show has been cancelled. If you've got tickets, you should have had an email already from the organisers regarding that and about getting refunds and so forth and Camp Quirky has been postponed. They're looking at an alternative date on the 2nd to the 4th of October, later in the year. They're just waiting confirmation of that and then I'm sure they'll issue another email just to confirm. So if you're still interested in going to Camp Quirky, hold on to your tickets. They will still be valid for the date which will appear later in the year. Right, so guys, we're here in Martin's van on our little park up in the south of Portugal. Sorry about the wind noise if you can hear that, but it's really blowing a gale outside, so hopefully that won't be too bad. It'd be a lot worse if we were outside, yeah. a lot worse. Yeah. I've known Martin for a while now, um, I think we met properly at Quirky last year, but I think I've known you a lot longer. Yeah, we, though, we were speaking, just messages back into an Instagram, but you yeah. don't want to bug someone because you've seen a video, but sometimes sure. you're like, this geezer's all right, like, yeah. let's keep in touch. And at Quirky, then... Yeah, we probably met at Quirky. Yeah, it was nice, actually. And I think my mum's definitely one of your biggest fans. That's she fine. spent quite a bit of time in your van, didn't Hi, she? Greg's mum. <laughs> Does she watch these? Yeah, she'll definitely oh, watch cool. this. Yeah, she'll love this that, you, that we've got to meet here, so that'll be great. Uh, Martin, you've got an amazing van for a start. This Thank is, you. Yeah, I mean, this is probably one of the most quirky vans I've ever seen. Like. I like that. There's a lot of um, bits. Yeah, <laughs> Lots yeah, yeah. of bits. So it's not really shiny caravan-y new, or it's not really tidy, but it is just 
it works. It's one of the most distinctive no, no, no. though, and probably one of the most recognisable vans out yeah, there. Yeah, that's not always a good thing. No. It's <laughs> not always a good thing. I do enjoy it, I do enjoy the attention sometimes, but sometimes you do want to just... Hide away a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just or, a little bit, and yeah. not have that knock at the door. Yeah. Hey, hey, follow you on YouTube, and it's... It's not always pleasant, but sometimes it's really appreciated. So what's your, what's your sort of background and what's your story? How did you get involved in van life and or come to be uh, living in them? I'd always had friends that were travellers and you sort of spend a lot of time with them and see what they're doing and their freedom of movement and all the rest. And it was always, it must have been impregnated up here just slightly, but it come down to like a relationship breakdown. And I had two camper vans at the time, and I was like, "Well, I'm just going to go on holiday." Yeah, right? sure. yeah just get. And this holiday, from this and... holiday was meant to be like two or three weeks. Until yeah. things calmed down, it was two or three months, two or three years, right. and like six and a half, nearly seven years now on the road, and it's still seven years. Yeah, it's still wow. going now. So, like, so, so how long have you had this van then? Or you? Uh, I'll be four years and about three or four oh, days. Man. I reckon I bought it in in March, yeah, so yeah. it will be coming up to four years now. That's so. crazy. Mm. I've been following some of your recent adventures because you've gone really off piste, haven't you? Sort oh, of definitely. Into, into the deepest parts of Europe. Definitely. And... Oh, is it just a mad road trip? Um, so we just we got on the Eurotunnel one day and we didn't know if to drive straight on or, or turn right and head down south. And we made the decision to go straight on and go and explore places that not so many people have explored and uh yeah some of the adventures have been a little bit a little bit crazy yeah you've definitely got to check out martin's channel because i've been following him recently and some of the scrapes he gets into oh, just yeah it's how i get out of them that's probably <laughs> more it's probably more interesting i'm sitting there watching the tv just cringing Ooh. so we're both obviously we've crossed paths here in southern portugal of course everybody knows what's going on at the moment everywhere is sort of getting closed mm. down and borders are closing and things like that so what are your sort of plans for the immediate future or what you're going to do it's a difficult one because the problem itself isn't what worries me the problem is the what happens because of the problem so i've I said this to you yesterday so what happens when diesel's not being delivered yeah, to the forecourts yeah. or when the food's not being delivered sure. to the supermarkets that's the only thing that worries me a little bit but I'm more than capable, like I've got... Yeah, as long like, as you can buy food and buy diesel... I think water and, water yeah. and diesel is my most important thing sure. that I need to stock up on. Yeah. I do have a jerry can with me, so that's like 120 litres of fuel that I can carry. Um, the water tank is probably the same one as yours, it's, it's huge. So it's like 80 or 90 yeah. litres, it's quite yeah. a big water tank. So that would last me a long time. We're actually going to go and find somewhere in the hills where there's going to be a, a fresh yeah, water just supply. just isolate yourself for yeah, a while. Yeah, and just be up there. I mean, yeah. uh, we got... A lot of dry food anyway and I don't mind I've got enough gear and tackle to go and make food and get food yeah if like that, if go that, fishing if you need yeah to if that ever out. had to be yeah, the case sure. um, but no I think we're just gonna sit quiet for a couple of days obviously keep in touch well while communications are still on keep yeah, in contact yeah, with absolutely. yourself and the rest yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I just think it'll just be sit and wait and just see what happens yeah, just don't it? don't stress about it too much like if anyone is watching this and they are stressing just don't believe everything that is said on the media. Listen to it and just make your own advice, your, no, make your own opinion on their advice, and just just relax. I think the biggest problem is when people stress out, we make unrational decisions, and yeah. and that's that's. I think the biggest good. problems back in the UK, from what we've been seeing anyway, is people are just panicking too much, and kind of like, you know, stockpiling stuff, and it, if you just go about your normal daily life, I know, you know, it's been restricted in terms of travel and work and stuff like that, but, act as normally as possible I mean, and then it relieves the pressure for everyone else then doesn't it yeah I, I think that is the case just just carry on your day-to-day -day life and turn off the tv yeah. turn off the tv and there's a lot of scare just watch in youtube media, isn't it? And just watch youtube yeah. like that's fine the truth's always on youtube yeah yeah absolutely uh, we're much the same i think we're just hanging on for a couple of weeks until we find out what the crack is with a couple of events that we've got back in, obviously Quirky's the Yeah, no, one. yeah, I, that, that's the, so my deadline for being back was yeah, for Camp Quirky. Absolutely. And it, it's probably the one I'll be most gutted about as well, yeah, to exactly. be honest, because yeah, yeah. the rest of them are later on in the year, so they might still go ahead. Yeah. But Camp Quirky is pretty much the earliest social event that, that I do in, in this scene You're anyway. in the same boat as we are. We'd love to be back at Quirky, but obviously with all of this hanging over your head as well, I'd rather be told, okay, let's postpone it until September, and then we can kind of like, not sort of chill out, but we can like relax on having yeah. to try and get back to the UK so quickly. Um, yeah, 
I'd like that to be honest and then that would kind of make things a little bit easier for you and I. I yeah, I mean the only other thing is maybe family, so family and friends that sure. you are concerned about but yeah. do you know what, everybody has one of these. Oh yeah, FaceTime and things like that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's all and, and if someone was, if someone did become ill anyway, you wouldn't be able to go and see them anyway so yeah. you've, you've still got the power of the internet to actually be there in, in person without being there so to speak. Yeah. So yeah, so are you going to just chill out and hide or? We're planning to stay down here. At the moment, I think out of all the countries in Europe, Portugal's probably one of the best places to be. They've got the least number of cases currently that I'm aware of. So it's probably one of the safest places to be. They've got the least number of population per area. Yeah. So I'm quite happy to be here and, and, and then just see what develops. They really. are pretty tolerant of people living in vehicles as well, because yeah. that's always been the norm for an area like this. At the end of the day we're kind of like out of the way anyway you know other than going to the supermarket or going to the petrol station we're on remote little park ups so we're kind yeah. of self-isolated anyway. So. And you don't mind a rough track either? No I am. Um, so we if, go if off you, track all the if time. If you were to go missing <laughs> then I'm sure you could. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah that, that's pretty much my plan. Yeah. Been really nice to meet you anyway Martin right so and stay, you again. stay safe yeah and uh, I'm sure our paths will cross. Hopefully, yeah, well, hopefully it's quirky if all goes well. We'll keep in contact over the next couple yeah, of definitely. days to weeks and yeah. see what happens. You never know, it might get to the point where they say, right, everyone from the UK has to be there. So there might be a lot of us in one place very soon. I don't think so at the moment. It seems it seems okay, doesn't it? So yeah. we'll, we'll see what develops over the next few days. But. Try not to lose any sleep over yeah. it. And while you're all cooped up indoors because you can't go anywhere do check out Martin's channel because oh, he's got, there's there's so much for he's got some there. fantastic videos on there yeah really really I'm glad confusing. you even think so because I look at the videos and I'm like oh do I put this out do I not put this yeah, out no, it's just it's just interesting for anybody who wants to get into van life I think it's just fascinating to watch his channel yeah. right peace out everyone cheers thanks guys a couple of days in now things are changing quite rapidly um, day by day as the you know the virus increases there's no lockdown at all it's not a state of a national emergency just yet still freedom of movement the borders have been restricted so it's only trucks and services and if you want to go home you, that is allowed but normal holiday travel has been restricted a lot of the airports are shut now as well so we've just come into the town of Lagos just to do our laundry like we would do normally just so we know we've got you know a full van of clean clothes if that does change in the next day or two at least you know we're prepared so we've just come into the speed queen here in lagos they've got a really nice big one here loads of machines about half a dozen dryers over the other side there so we're just going to make sure we've got all our washing done this morning there's nobody else in here it's actually very quiet there's quite a few people at the supermarkets we've noticed they're doing a one in one out policy now so they're queued outside um, and they are restricting sort of your proximity to other people to at least one and a half meters we did our shopping the other day so we're okay for food for a while and then probably when we leave the laundry here i'm just going to pop to a local air and just uh, empty the toilet cassette and fill up with some fresh water I believe there's going to be an announcement by the Prime Minister of Portugal this afternoon and then obviously he's going to then give us some further news as to what the current situation is. So we'll just sit tight, wait for that and then we'll make a decision what our next move's going to be. So we're just taking the opportunity to do our services as well. We've pulled up to an air in Lagos which is right near the stadium. There's quite a big camp of camper vans here, it's a big open ground dumped the grey water normally this is a token probably about one or two euros to get you some water but another good thing and positive thing that Portugal are doing because of the current situation all water services in this machine are provided free of charge so that's really helpful this is the municipal air if you like which is near the stadium right in the middle of town huge great big parking lot here and obviously as you can see there's quite a number of motorhomes and campers here it's typically i think a couple of euros two or three euros to park here each night so it's very very reasonable so i guess 
you know, if it does come to lockdown, you'll see a lot more people here rather than go home. I think this is where everyone's going to congregate and this will be where the local GNR will ask you to park so they can kind of contain everybody. So last on the list of services, just fill up the GPL tank or auto gas LPG as we know it. So I've got into a BP station, fortunately in Lagos there's one here that's got auto gas for 78 or 79 cents a litre. I've just filled up 10 litres, so that's just under half a bottle. But it's always worth having a full bottle for that peace of mind and then not have to worry about it. Right guys, I'm here in the glorious Esme van <laughs> with Sue and Paul Brown. It's got to be Paul Brown, by the way. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll let them explain why, but we always call him Paul Brown. Um, these guys have been travelling with us for a few weeks now, haven't it? It's going to be two, three weeks? Or two and a half lo weeks. Losing track? Yeah, yeah. Lose, we lose track of the time, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Every day's weeks. a Saturday to having, us. Having far too much fun. Yeah. We met these guys in the north of Portugal, um, up near the Douro Valley. We've come down through the Douro Valley to Porto. We had a lovely day out in Porto, mm -hmm. that was really nice, wasn't it? And then we've been slowly sort of travelling down the coast, and we're here obviously in the Algarve now. So, have you enjoyed your time with so us far, oh, so good you know, yeah. it's been absolutely brilliant i think you've made it for us mm. to be fair because you've shown us around and uh, introduced things that we would never have found i mean that drive through the doro valley yeah that's um, sandman's rather yeah. made me love there. portugal you know mm. fell in love with it mm. yeah so it's, it's handy because when we came here obviously we had to find a lot of it out ourselves mm. we were lucky that we had uh, people like Roy to show us a lot yeah, of uh, yeah. places, which is obviously we've passed that on in yeah, right. you the guys, first so. king of Portugal. That's yes, yeah. <laughs> we would never have known about him. No, so we've we've had an absolutely fantastic time yeah. with these guys. So, tell us a little bit about your van, Paul. What's the basically it's a Fiat Ducato ambulance, ex uh, patient transport. patient transport. So it basically, it served its purpose, redundant. So I took it on, bought it what five thousand pound. Probably spent five thousand pound on parts. Yeah. Uh, spent six months doing him. So uh, it was basically kitted out as an as, as an an bus. Then, wasn't it? Loads of seats, seats in, in it, rails, yeah. and uh, yeah. but the only downside to that that basically it, it didn't have the insulation. So I've re really had to sort of start from scratch, stripped it all out, insulated it, and then put it all back together. Yeah, and done a good job as well. well. So far. <laughs> I was advising. <laughs> Obviously, you've come down to meet us guys and travel around. Yeah. Have you got a deadline for you to go back, or? It's yeah. a bit weird the way situation with this pandemic that originally well, yeah. we had, we did have a, a date yeah. uh, to to get back to. We, we we've got a channel booked, yeah. but yeah. we we feel that we're safer here. Sure. And um, we're doing everything that we possibly can to sort of like keep ourselves safe like yeah. the gloves at the laundrette yeah, yeah, and the yeah. alcohol gel and you know just mm. one person going into the supermarket and that um but you've got no plans to rush home no or plans no, to rush no. home only if medication runs out and we can't get the, uh, yeah, paul's sure. medication that's the only reason that we go but back i think you guys the same as us you were going back for camp quirky yeah yeah, yeah that, that was, was it the yeah. Issue, yeah. And obviously yeah. now that's been postponed so yeah. mm. that's kind of taking a bit of stress off of us to, to try and rush back though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, glad that they made the decision yeah. early so that we could actually plan as well. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah. Are you going to keep your tickets and still go in the October if you can? Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, if because have us, yeah. we're not sure that we can come back. We were going to come back out to Europe in September, but we're not sure that's going to happen. Mm. So it's probably better that we stay here as long as possible. Yeah. And I mean, then that's, the, that's the problem at the moment. Yeah. Nobody really knows how it's all yeah, going to pan out it's no. still early days and the fact that everything's on clamp down yeah when is that going to finish we don't know so it's a bit of an open book isn't it so. well we're more than happy to have you guys with us so <laughs> thank we've, you we've, we've yes. really enjoyed your company it's yeah. nice to have somebody to chat to and whatever yeah. and, and shoot the breeze with while we're absolutely. sort of waiting to hear what's going to happen yeah so, yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely we'll so look yeah. forward to some more adventures more Uno. Yes. <laughs> and I think it's fishing this afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I yeah. think so, yeah. You know, take on things. Yeah. Spark up the barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, yeah and yourself. You. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Tell you what, guys, but you never thought you'd see this on this trip. Me. What the fishing rod in the air? <laughs> Trying to catch me dinner. 
one of the other couples that's with us on this little park up are Debs and Martin. You're fairly new to YouTube and you've got a newish YouTube yeah. channel. We called, have, yeah. Called We're Away. We're Away. We're and no, we haven't got the name wrong. Yeah, because I said, <laughs> I thought they got a spelling mistake in the title of their YouTube channel. You're not the only one. You can explain. Yeah, because me being from Tyne and Weir, it's like Weir Away. Well, the, the, so river, the river is yeah. uh, the river Weir. So it, it's a bit of a twist in We Are Away and We're Away. Yeah. Um, so up some then they'll go, We're Away. So that's where it's come yeah. from. Yeah. How, how long have you had your van? Um, <clears throat> since last January. Started in January, didn't we? Six yeah. months, uh, no, three, four, five months, and then Bil um, actual building it. Yeah, yeah, building it, doing it, and then yeah. uh, our first and trip. And then was June. Our first trip was Willycombe. Yeah, Devon loved right. it. And yeah. then the Boom Dockers. Yeah, well, that's where <laughs> obviously we, we <laughs> met you guys yeah. at the Boom yeah. Dockers. But that wasn't our first meeting, though, was it? Because we'd met you before that. Um, I'm sure we had. Oh, Asher's um, doing that. Ash 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 yeah, yeah, Ash yeah. Ash 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 yeah. Yeah, so we've known you for a little while. Yeah. But, so, uh, how many videos have you got on your channel at the moment? Uh, We've gee. got 30! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, early videos. Yeah. Early dear still, Laura, yeah. isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I've, I've been watching a few of these guys' videos and they're really funny. So, yeah, definitely check them out because it is a real good crack. Yeah. Yeah. Get subscribers yeah. because we need more subscribers. We're, to, we're just trying to keep it bubbly. But uh, yeah. the whole reason behind it was one. Uh, the first thing is for us to keep that record. Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of people do blogs and writing them down, but we just did the video of it. And the second thing is um, Deb's mum is um, slightly yeah. housebound. Oh, so and it's she a good way for her to yeah, follow you, isn't yeah. it? She keeps in touch with a whole, which is a big family up Sunday. Yeah. Um, she keeps in touch with them all on the iPad. Okay, yeah. So she sits so and watches us. She sits and watches us, and watches us on yeah. our adventures. And then just calls the silly buggers <laughs> from a distance. So, yeah. so how long have you been out in Europe now? In the, um, first time we were out for over a month and a half, wasn't yeah, it? We did a France trip, uh, which is documented again uh, on YouTube uh, videos. We went yeah. back for Christmas and then came out 2nd of January. Right. Yeah. And, and then you, what, same sort of areas or you toured all no, around? No, we toured about. We did, um, we, we skipped, uh, this time we skipped straight down from France. We come down straight down the tolls. Just wanted to get to the warm yeah, weather. To the, I see it, sun yeah. seeking. Yeah, yeah. We went across the north of Spain, which is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I love the north of Spain. The scenery there is really nice. Yeah, we did that the first really time is. we came out. It's very mountainous. Yeah, it's it? ruggedy. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, bombed it right straight down to here. But when we first come into the top end of Portugal, we didn't actually like the place. Okay. It was it was miserable. It's the weather. Oh, the weather, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was pouring down, and every sure. beach we went to was like. Well, you can't really get out and enjoy yourself, can no, you? No, it was a bit untidy. I think there were mm. loads of rubbish in that round it, but whether they cleaned clean it up yeah. in the summer, I don't know. It's quite built up on the, yeah, on the, top, on the top, top, end. End. top end of Portugal. So it's yeah. come about level with Lisbon, coming down, the scenery changed, yeah. and it's brilliant. Don't want to go back. We should go up and check out the Douro Valley though, because yeah, that's, that's yeah. really beautiful. We're going to go there. back up again with yeah, the weather. Stunning. So. Yeah, if we, 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 we came in that way with Sue and Paul, and it's just really beautiful mm -hmm. all the way down that, all the way down to Porto. It's lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we're definitely we're going to like zigzag back up. Well, see what happens, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that leads us on because I wanted to ask you guys what your what are your sort of plans and thoughts on the current situation. Then are you? planning to stay down here? Um, well yeah we are, um, the way I look at it but um, I'm probably a, like a high risk category uh, with my condition so uh, I personally think, or we both personally think, I'm safer here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The less people, the less crowds. Less um, cases. Yeah. Um, and basically the fresh air and, and the way we live in I think will actually better for me. Yeah absolutely. Um, uh, so we've got no real serious reason to go home. My father's elderly, but he's in, um, he's in the home at the moment, which is shut down. We, yeah. we wouldn't be able to visit no, him. No, exactly, yeah, yeah. So um, but that's our plan, really, just mm. to stay out and see what happens and ride it out. But I will say we're in a fantastic company. Yeah, it's been a good little group here. Yeah, yeah, it's so. a lovely Fantastic group. little spot. If you was to yeah. be stranded anywhere. Yeah, yeah where well, would you rather be? Yeah, but we, I don't feel isolated. No. Not with the group we've we've got here. Yeah. And uh, my best friends are down as well. So um, 
uh, that I've known for 30 years. And the local years. shop here is well stocked and things like that, isn't it? So yeah, so uh, yeah. Well, there has been a comment that we should have gone home, um, but I personally think that uh, I've made the right yeah, decision. That's it. Each other's yeah, that's it. situations, yeah, like say, isn't there's, it? Uh, there's a lot less cases here at the moment. Yeah. 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 It's a bigger open, more wide open spaces yeah. and less population. Yeah, yeah no, that's, right. that's, that's what I feel. So we're just going to ride it out and yeah, see what happens. See what happens. Whether things will change or not. Yeah. Well, we need your water, we need your food, yeah. we need your yeah, everything, everything really. We need, yeah. And we've got plenty of pot noodles in stock. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it's been cracking meeting up again with you guys, yeah. so and we're happy to be here with you. So. It's great. We're yeah. happy to be with you. And get subscribing! <laughs> Hit that button! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please do check these guys' channel out. I'll put all the links in the description below. They put out some cracking content. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, Greg. <laughs> so I'll just jump back in the van because it's a little bit less windy in here, so you can hear me a little bit better. But we've been keeping abreast of the latest news and what's been happening around Europe, especially back home in the UK and here in Portugal, where we are. And. Um, it, the Portuguese government seemed to really have taken the ball by the horns and really got a hold of the situation. Um, the schools would normally have two weeks shut down at Easter, which is in a couple of weeks' time, but they've taken a decision to close the schools already. So as of yesterday, all the schools are closed here for the next month. Um, so all the kids are at home. So that's minimised any contact from the children's side of things. What they've also done, because obviously that puts a massive um, impact on the families. They've got to go to work, obviously, and earn money. So the government has allowed one of the parents of families that have got kids that are 12 years and under to stay at home with the children, look after the kids. And then they're going to, I believe, pay 60% uh, of that person's salary um, from the government to allow them to do that. You know, I think that's an absolutely fantastic, bold step to make. Um, and it's something that needs to be done. Portugal, out, I think out of all of the countries in the EU at the moment, are probably the least affected. Um, there's been only a, a couple of hundred cases um, found of infections at the moment. And I believe only so far, only one person has died, an elderly person in their 80s. Um, so the situation here is really good. Obviously it's a massive country with a small population, something like 10 million people live here in Portugal, so there's a lot of wide open spaces, which does help as well with the isolation. I know obviously the whole of the population of Portugal is equivalent to the population in London alone, um, so hence there's a different dynamic there. The other thing that they've done is they've closed the borders, there's now, I believe, only nine routes in and out of Portugal. They've restricted all travel, um, apart from trucks and services. Um, they can cross the border, but you've got to have a pretty good excuse if you want to get in or out of Portugal at the moment. So, from our point of view, it feels like a really safe place to be. We went down to a local supermarket in a little town here yesterday. We went fairly early. There was a security guard at the door allowing people in. There was hand sanitizer there which we used and there was also gloves available which we used as well. We were advised to stay at least one and a half meters away from anybody else in the shop but there were only literally half a dozen people in there so that was no problem at all. And then when we got to the checkout there was a line at the checkout where you could go to the checkout, cash out your goods and the person who was next in the queue had to stand behind that line and then they were next. And all the shelves were full of produce. There was loads of fresh vegetables and fruit. All of the shelves were full. Um, we had absolutely no issues with getting water, food or anything like that. And there was nobody rushing in there to panic buy. People were just buying their normal daily goods. And we did exactly the same. We just bought our normal provisions. We didn't go mad. We didn't stockpile or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, you know, that food and those goods are there for other people. You know, you can't be selfish in a situation like this. Just go about your normal daily business, buy your normal produce or what you would normally use, and then there's enough for everybody to go around and things will run as they would normally. You know, we've been watching some of the footage back home and some of the crazy antics that are going on in the shops back home and I'm just appalled by 
you know, people's attitudes to the whole situation and how selfish people have been. So, yeah, just go about your normal business, you know, and, and everything will be fine. The situation will be fine. People will have more food to go around. And then just like we are, just beware of your surroundings. Just isolate yourself as much as possible. Beware of your own sanitation. Keep yourself clean. Keep distance from other people. Um, sit it out and ride the storm. I think if we can do our bit as a community, I'm sure the impact will be a lot less and this whole thing will be over much quicker. So I just want to say, you know, take care guys. I know it's a worrying time, but I'm sure if we all pull together and we're all sensible about it, you know, we can all get through this. So look after yourselves. Do leave me a comment below. Let me know what your current situation is. Uh, let me know that you're okay. Um, we'd love to hear from all you guys back in the UK. But just want to say we are fine. No problem at all. We're quite happy. We've got all our food and water. Um, we're missing everybody back home and we wish you all well. Um, we love all you guys a lot. So look after yourselves and we'll catch you again soon. Take care. Cheers.